couldn't have been any other good news for us other than Jesus Christ laying down his life for us such that we all can be reconciled back to his Father, God in heaven. This is what every Sunday we come your way with this program, the Sanctuary, the Gospel and Symbols, where we understand God's plan of salvation for us. Yes, it is his personal plan that seeks to redeem us from the shackles of sin and from all the trappings of Satan. Every Sunday, we want to thank you for tuning in for, towards this program and joining with us in your homes. We want to encourage you to send through your questions and your comments via the WhatsApp numbers and email, which will be scrolling on your screen. Yet again, we have our resource persons who would help us with the help, with the Holy Spirit guiding them to give us insights into God's plan for our salvation. Elder and Eskusia Babio, to my left, worships with the Prince Emmanuel Sunday Adventist Church here in Ringway State Osu. Elder, welcome. Thank you, Charles. Uh, hope you are staying safe. The Lord is keeping us safe. We thank God. And to my right is Pastor Emmanuel Champon. Pastor, good to have you today too. Nice to be with you, Charles. And uh, we hope the brethren and believers in Accra City Conference are doing well. By God's grace, everyone is doing fine. We thank you. And welcome to you viewer at home also for taking time to join with us on this program. So we have become members of God's household. We are in the holy place. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is telling us about the original plan he had. Mm -hmm. And he's walking us through what has happened relative to the entrance of sin mm -hmm. and how it was affecting the things that was created. But in all of this too, he's showing us that he remains in charge as far as the plan of salvation is concerned. Last week, he got to explain to us how, you know, um, the, there was uh, deprivation and wickedness on the face of the earth. And thankfully, our resource persons drew our attention to that in the midst of the controversy, there's always a remnant. And in this case, it was Noah and his family. Today, we want to continue from where we left off last week to understand what this remnant of God did. What were the unique characteristics which makes us know what God has originally designed for us. So, Pastor, I want to begin with you. Yes. Last week, we know that there's so much sin and evil on the face of the earth. Yes. And Elder mentioned that uh, in our days, we asked the question, is it different from our days? Say, yes, it's not different. It's even go gotten worse. So, in the time of Noah, there was destruction. Yes. Did God just bring the destruction or he offered man the opportunity to repent of his sins? Well, Charles, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, uh, just as we read from Genesis 6, 8, mm -hmm. which he says that when God saw that everything was totally, you know, sin, mm -hmm. there was sin everywhere, at least God saw Noah, who he found him to be faithful to him, and therefore... The Bible God, says he was a just man. A just man. And perfect in his generation. Yes. And so verse 13 says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh, as you can yes. read for and us. And God please. said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Mm -hmm. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Yes. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And verse 14, shall I add that? Yes. And so God told him, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. Yes. And it goes on with the length yes. and all of yes. this. Yes. Thank you, Charles, for reading this for us. This was God who has seen evil so much, but still the love of God for man, man mm. and for his creation to continue. He saw Noah. And therefore told Noah, build this ark. I thank God that uh, this ark, I mean, uh, somebody has uh, tried to make something like that. A replica of it in the United States. Mm. Which people are going to see, they see and then they, they, they see the wonders of God. How God saved mankind. Through the same thing, God used the ark to save Noah and his family. And it's so strange that, I mean, when God... Uh, verse chapter 7, mm -hmm. 
Genesis chapter 7. Yes, verse 1. Go yes, on. you can read that. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Mm -hmm. For thee I have, have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and the beast that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. And let, let, just leave it there. Just, you see, God saving mankind. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 so why is it that the question comes that, why is it that when God called Noah to go into the ark, mm -hmm for salvation. He began again from where verse 2 he says, and you shall make take with you seven each of every animal, clean animal. So before God, there is something that we are learning before God. There's something clean and there's something unclean. Before we come to those aspects of the details, I want us to backtrack a bit on the provision God made to save mankind. Yes. Was it only meant for Noah and his family? Did God intend to save only Noah and his family? Not at all. In fact, Noah had preached for 120 years. 120 years. Trying to bring these people attention to what was going to happen. In fact, the people laughed at him and they were in their highest uh, doubt about, about, about what Noah was telling them. Mm -hmm. uh, they thought Noah was getting out of, of his senses <laughs> because it had never rained. Mm -hmm. All this while, it had never rained. So for him to say that it was going to rain and there was going to be a flood, where is that com com coming from? It has never happened. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe it. And in the state in which they were, mm -hmm. just like us, mm -hmm. can you imagine that people can make a prophetic statements mm -hmm. in the next minute they are praising God? Mm. I, I, I you can't imagine. I, can, I, 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 I shudder. Mm -hmm. how, how can you, how can you be praising God in one instance? I mean, at, it, it's, it's, it's strange. But let us not joke with God. He is God. He is not a human being. Amen. You know, when Noah, God commanded him to build the ark, Noah himself alone could not, couldn't have built the ark. No. These were the people who helped him. But you know, he paid them. They were paid. Yes. Okay. He paid them. He, he paid them. He must have been a rich man. Well, he was. Okay. God ensured that he had the means to pay them. Mm. They were paid for everything they did. It wasn't for free. Yet, they were invited to come in for free. Mm. They were not to pay to come in, even though they, they collected money. Payments. Yeah, exactly. But none of them, because they were, they were enjoying the world. Mm. Today we talk about lesbianism, we talk about homosexuality. That was what they were doing. Mm. They were enjoying the world. And they had no need for, for Noah's ark. It wasn't going to rain. There's, there's nothing like rain. Mm. It had never rained from mm. the day God had made the earth. I think we read that. In, sure. Yes. You know? And so the, 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 the thought of a distraction was far fetched mm. Even as some people today mm. are thinking, God is so loving, God is so kind, God is so gracious. Mm. How can God destroy this earth with fire? No, he's not going to do that. Mm. Then, then we should be better than them. Mm -hmm. We should be better than the anti-deluvians. Mm. But if we are not better than them, then he sure will destroy. Because, yes, God said, I, we can read um, Genesis chapter 9, mm -hmm. verse 11 to 13. 9 verse 11 to 13. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. Mm. 
and it shall be for a token of a covenant between mm. me and the earth. Mm. This is the Noahic covenant. Mm -hmm. The covenant that God had with Noah okay. was a rainbow. Mm. That was a sign that God would never destroy this earth with flood. Mm. Okay. It did not mean God would not destroy right. the earth, okay. could, but with flood. Could you take that <laughs> sentence again? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. God said, mm -hmm. I will set my, my, my bow in the, in the skies, yeah. and whenever the clouds form, mm -hmm. it will tell you mm -hmm. that I will not destroy the earth with flood mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it means. Okay. It doesn't mean that God is not going to destroy the earth. So then for those who are thinking and speculating that, I mean, this destruction that is to vis be visited upon mankind, as mm -hmm. will be later coming to, mm -hmm. it is an imagination. It will not happen. You know, I, I don't know why they are doubting the, the same word. They believe in some part of the word and others they don't believe. Because this same Bible tells us that God is going to destroy this earth with fire. Matthew 25. Okay. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 40. We can read, well, it's a little bit lengthy, mm -hmm. but... If you don't mind, we can read from 30, 30, 31 to okay. 41. Okay, Matthew 25, 31, that was, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come! Ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhanged, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhanged, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in? or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see? For the devil. So if anybody thinks that there's not going to be fire, to destroy the wicked, then it means he doesn't believe in the Bible. Okay. Because the Bible is saying those who are on the left, who are the goats, and that is why the devil is a goat. Mm. The Baphomet, mm. Baphomet is the goat. Okay. And, and that's what depicts the devil. Okay. And everyone who has characteristic of the goat, mm -hmm. shall be they are on the left. Okay. And they shall be destroyed. Okay. With the fire that God has prepared for the devil and his angels. So in essence, Elder, uh, in essence, in the holy place, Jesus Christ is telling his children right. that I always have made a provision to save mankind. Sure. And this was what I offered to the world then. But yes, yet sir. again, man chooses which side of loyalty his mm -hmm. allegiance would be. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the previous two episodes, you and Pastor said it was a question of worship. The side we choose determine who we worship yes. and give our allegiance to. Now, fast forward onto this Noah example. And this is where now uh, he has preached for 120 years right. and, and co. Now, uh, it is time for something to happen. And that is where Pastor mm -hmm. started reading yeah, uh, chapter, uh, seven. chapter 7. seven yes. And uh, uh, Pastor, I read and it was of every clean beast yes, thou yes. shalt take. My question, I have a question there. Hey, God, not long ago in Genesis 1 and 2, mm. whenever he creates something, he says it was good. Mm. It was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. Mm. But here he says some beasts are clean and some are unclean. Why is God changing his mouth like someone will literally say? God sure. doesn't change his mind. Okay. He's the same God. He's one God, mm -hmm. one faith, one baptism, everything. He's the same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and, and tomorrow. Okay. Good. So now we have established that. Okay. Now, God saying everything was good for creation, that does not mean that everything was good Perpetually. to eat. Okay. Now, God is differentiating clean and unclean on the basis of 
uh, 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 putting it into life. Here is the case that man is going to get the opportunity to even feed on animals. Okay. So God being the omnipotent God mm -hmm. and knowing yesterday he is preparing man's, man's mind that these are clean and these are unclean. Mm -hmm. And he made it that the clean ones, he took them in uh, how many in sevens mm -hmm. and the unclean ones in he twos. took them in twos now Charles you will believe with me that let us look at the earth mm -hmm. like um, worms mm. uh, these I mean worms that are, I mean uh, uh, the earth, earth mm -hmm. worms. Yeah, earthworms the earthworms what do they do they help make holes so that in the soil uh, in the soil so that Water there is and gas uh, uh, and yes goes into Oxygen. the uh, 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 earth <laughs> so that i mean uh, 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 we nourishes also the nourishes the soil the it is not for excuse me to say mm. for eating therefore when god says they are unclean it is not good to go into the i mean uh, the, the, the the body in which he his his, his holy spirit Dwells, dwells in. So if it is not good for it to go into our body, we mm -hmm. have become members of God's household. Mm -hmm. So it matters to God the things we put in us. It Indeed. does. You see, um, Charles, I, 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 I tend to, you know, wonder how Christians can uh, make that uh, omnibus statement. Mm -hmm that we can eat anything. No. But the Bible doesn't teach that. This is Genesis. Yeah. God yes. has categorized the animals to clean and unclean. Okay. And like Pastor said, the cleanness and the uncleanness is not about whether they were good or bad. Okay. No. So there are two no. different descriptions. What God calls clean, mm -hmm. it means you can eat. Oh. What he calls unclean mm. means you cannot eat. eat. But they all have their functions. Yes. I had been, I had been to some place, I won't mention, mm. uh, for, some, for some reason. Mm -hmm. But when I went there, there were swine. Mm -hmm. And all the swine was doing was eating feces. Because the people have actually defecated on the, on this, on this, uh, the shore. Mm -hmm. and, and the swine were just eating it. Mm. Mm. These are... Uh, scavengers. Uh, uh, scavengers and and and, and clean and cleaners. They mm -hmm. clean the environment, mm -hmm. like the shrimps mm -hmm. and the crustaceans mm -hmm. in the sea, and mm -hmm. the seabed. Mm -hmm. All the dirt that goes under the seabed had to be cleaned. And God had made the crustaceans to to do that. The shrimps, the the crabs, and all that is their business. So, so that's the goodness of God. That is yes. it. When you go mm -hmm. when in the Serengeti, mm -hmm. uh, in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, they, they have this migration every year. Okay. And many of the animals die on the way. Imagine that there was nobody to clean it. There's the stench. Mm. But the vultures, mm -hmm. they descend on them mm -hmm. and all the carcasses are eaten up. That is the, the work of the vultures. This is God's business. This is God's wisdom. So if God created swine, mm -hmm. He created grass cutters mm -hmm. and rats. Mm. He's, he's not telling human beings, go and eat them. Now, let's go to the Bible. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Yes. Listen to what God is saying about yes. this clean and unclean business. Okay. This. Verse uh, f 1. You read one from downwards. 1 up to... Five. Ye are the children three. of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Those who do tattoos, yes. mm. they should go and read this. Mm. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord yes. thy God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, mm. above all the nations that are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Do you hear the word? Abominable. 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 When, when, when the word abominable, what does that mean? Detests. It's Detestable. It's this is an abomination. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not eat any detestable or an abominable thing. Go ahead. 
these are the beasts which ye shall eat. Mm. Very good. So now, you can, whoever, uh, our viewers can continue to read. Okay. But now God is telling you, don't eat anything that is an abomination. Mm. But I'm giving you the things that you can eat. Mm. And when you read on, God gives you the characteristics of the animals that you can eat mm. and those that you cannot eat. Those you can eat, two things. Mm -hmm. One, they should have parted hoofs mm -hmm. and they should chew the cart. Mm -hmm. That is, they, when they eat, when they have eating, mm -hmm. they should regurgitate. Okay. They should bring the food mm -hmm. out Water. into their mouth and, and chew, chew again. Mm. But that is not the only. They should also have parted hoofs. The hoofs mm -hmm. of the animal should be parted. Okay. If it is webbed, you cannot eat it. Mm. God has made everything clear. For the, for, for the, for the fishes, mm -hmm. those that have fins, fins. Mm -hmm. scales. and skills, those that you can scrape, mm -hmm. those are the ones that you should eat. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. For birds, mm -hmm. those that have webbed feet, mm -hmm. you don't eat them. So something like a, what a duck, mm -hmm. you don't eat a duck gotcha. because it, the, 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 the feet is webbed. Mm -hmm. You know, so God in his wisdom has given us all the animals that we should eat. People think that clean and unclean is for Israel. But Noah was not an Israelite. This is the question Noah, I know as Noah you are. existed many years even before Abraham. Even Abraham himself, he wasn't an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Even though Israel came out of him. of him. He wasn't. How can you then tell me that clean and unclean belongs to, belongs to Israel? And you know, people think that Eating clean and unclean has got nothing to do with our salvation. Religion. Wait a minute. That let's it? go. Let's go. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm. Okay. It reads, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You see, God says, touch not the unclean thing. Let alone eat it. All right? And whatever you eat, you should, you should eat to the glory of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Mm. Everything you eat, you should eat it to the glory of the Lord. Mm. If you are eating it to the glory of the Lord, mm -hmm. and God has given you a set of animals that you should eat, and those that you should not eat, and you are eating those he said you shouldn't eat, are you eating to his glory? Indeed, my answer will be that then you don't want to identify with him as a member of his household. You know, you know, we are human beings. We should accept that, yes. that we are human beings and we don't know what happens in the spiritual. Mm. We don't. We just have to be obedient. That's all. Yes. Be obedient. God says, don't do this. Yes, dad, I won't do it. Don't try to think you, you are more wiser than God. Hmm. Do you know what the devil does with unclean animals? Mm. No. You should go and ask the witches. And you should go into the occult and ask them what they do with the dogs and the swine and the, and the crabs and all those unclean animals. What it does to human beings. God is, is a loving father. He doesn't need to explain everything to you. You need to worship God in faith. In faith. Without faith. It is impossible to please God. That's it. So don't, don't try to... Don't try to to, to be a technical advisor to God. <laughs> oh God, but you know, uh, snails have a lot of protein and, 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 the, and the pork, and the meat is very nice. And, you know, and there are some fatty Listen, oils. listen, Jesus said, once again, Matthew 16, 24, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to come after me, deny yourself, deny yourself, take up your cross, take up your cross and, follow and follow me. Are you ready? Yes, it is nice. But are you ready to deny? You don't want to make any sacrifice in your life. Yet you want to follow Jesus Christ. Why would Christ go to the cross and die for you and make that sacrifice that you don't just because of pork and grass cutter and snails? Pastor, yes, we sir. are running out of time. Yes. For our believers watching at home okay. who would still want to uh, rationalize and say that, oh, all this you are reading from, we are talking about the Old Testament and... Uh, the New Testament, Jesus says, I have cleansed all things. I have 
I mean, some, you know, some even quotes or, uh, a, a certain vision that, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, Acts chapter 10. Yes, the, uh, episode. Mm. What, what do we say? We don't have time, but we have just um, uh, uh, two minutes to go. So I'll give you one minute of it to okay. please speak briefly about responding to this. Uh, the, the, the Bible tells us that we, 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 we don't have to think for God. Okay. And uh, sometimes, or most of the times, we want to do things that we feel that it is okay for us. Yes, it can be okay for you, but it does not lead you to salvation. And that is what God is cautioning us, that we desire to do things. Of course, he will allow you the freedom that he has given us. However, ask yourself, will this lead me to salvation? Will this lead me to eternal life? When Jesus comes, by so doing, will he accept me? Those are the questions God wants us to ask ourselves first and foremost. Then, so that by the time Jesus comes, you have already decided, you have helped to decide which way you want to go. I believe you have also asked yourself the questions that Pastor mentioned. And as he enumerated them, I just couldn't help but remember what Elder said. Many times we become technical advisors to God. We, s we tend to interpret it without looking at that saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the good book tells us that whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. God. If we have become members of his household, he's teaching us what his real plan for us was, that it is not anything at all his child can consume and yet cons call himself a child of God. Mm -hmm. Because if you belong to his family, if you have become members of his household because we are in the holy place, mm -hmm. There are some things we cannot soil our bodies with. Remember, our bodies are the temple of God. And so I believe that you have taken your bets from it. Let us be mindful that the same God who was there yesterday, he is same today and forever. If those times it was unacceptable for mankind to eat those kind of animals, clean and unclean, as he describes them, then what do we say for our reasons for indulging in all of these things and having all the scientific proofs to back our eating of these? It is not a question of works for salvation, no. But he tells us that if we are saved, then also our works will testify of whom we belong to. It is my hope and prayer that you have been blessed just as I have. And I want to thank our resource persons, Pastor Emmanuel Champon of the Blessed Assurance of the Adventist Church and Elder Neskusia Babiu, of the Prince Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church. And for you, for making time to watch us at home. Thank you. See you same time next week. I have been your regular host, Charles Otunelabi. Stay blessed. God be with you. Bye-bye.